Hey, welcome, or oh, welcome back, to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? Probably never. However, you are hopefully looking at me in black and white right now. Which means... If you've watched any of my previous films in this series, you will know this is the continuation of my photo inspiration collaboration series. That's a lot of words. Wow. Whew. And I am absolutely delighted that once again, one of my previous collabies enjoyed the series so much, she's chosen a photo. So today, Linda's choice of photo is the inspiration for today's look. So, if you want to find out just exactly what picture Linda chose, and what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, relax. Because here it comes. When you're trying to find the right shade. Please tell me it's not just me doing that sort of thing, huh? Right, welcome back from the intro. Which hopefully I will have remembered to make black and white. Because... This is another one in my photo collabs. I'm just going to get rid of these while I'm talking to you. In my photo collabs series. Oh, the glitter. <sighs> photo collabs series. How many times have I tried to say that now? Three, four, five? I don't know. <clears throat> I am so happy that, you know, the people that I've collabed with have enjoyed it so much that they're all agreeing to go again. Um, Stars Hollywood Jessica was my first repeat. And I'm absolutely delighted that the wonderful Linda, Linda Wallinda, or Wallinda, uh, is my second repeat. Um, if you've seen our previous one, you'll know that I absolutely adore Linda. She is another one of the Swedish YouTubers that I, I, I seem to have a thing for Swedish YouTubers. I don't know, maybe it's because they all like colour, maybe it's the accent, I don't know. Maybe I was Swedish in a former life. Anyhow, um, as always, I always give people the option, um, do they want me to provide the photo or do they want to? Now, first round they will win, oh no, no, you send the photo, which was fair enough. Second round, they're like, mm, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm doing the photo this time. Which is awesome. I love the fact that they're enjoying my series so much, you know? Um, so Linda sent, well she actually sent me three photos over, uh, but uh, you can guess why I chose this one, can't you? Do you know what I'm like? Mind you, there was one with a lot of green on it and I was really tempted by that too, but this, just like a mystical, magical forest with purple, all, all different shades of the purple, from the, like the reddy purple of the leaves and the, the, the bluey purple of the trunk, um... And then the really, really deep sort of blackish purple on the edges. And then, you know, the, the, the path has got... Yeah, I'm looking at it on my phone because clearly it's not there yet because I haven't edited it in yet. Um, you know, it's got lighter shades of purple. It's got... It goes through into like a mustardy orange. There's a bit of green grass there. And then right at the end, it's that beautiful blue halo of light. So... Personally, to me, what this is, this is a fairy grotto. And you follow the little path and the light is the fairies having a party at the other end. That's how my brain's working. Well, well welcome to my world. Right, um, I'm going to get you zoomed in while I talk through a little bit of housekeeping. And then I'm going to start putting some colours on my face. Um... My channel's aimed at all skill levels, from beginners right the way through to experts. I'm not claiming I'm an expert, far from it. 
um, but I do know how frustrating it was as a beginner when people don't come up this mm -hmm. close so you can't really see what they're doing will my phone please shut up <clears throat> um, you know and I, I used to find that so frustrating as a beginner as you can see I'm really struggling hay fever wise again unfortunately I'm gonna have this all year my eyes as part of my fibro my eyes are quite watery anyway so you add hay fever and pretty much from March through to sort of September October my eyes do this so um, I have washed moisturized um, SPF and primed my face on my eyelids I've got a tart shape tape which I have set today with Coty Esper. Um yeah so because of my chronic illness and my chronic pain I can't um, blend as quickly as a lot of people do and I very often have to stop because I'm aware that if there's a complete beginner out there who's never picked up a brush before I want to talk them through each stage so my videos are longer yes I could probably be a much larger channel if I did like everybody else does and trims it all down and speeds things up and cuts bits out but there's hundreds and thousands of channels like that I want it to be different and if that means my channel grows slower then so be it right I am going to start with my Riviera Kid palette which annoyingly had this smut on it when it arrived <clears throat> right I'm gonna go into can not canes or cones can like the can film festival right that I know is one of um, one of the press pigments so it might stain but it doesn't bother me so I'm going to go into can this is um, a Carla crease brush now as always Anastasia shadows kick up quite a bit so I do tap off but I've not done my base yet so I'm really not worried so I'm going to start off by running this lightly through the crease. Now because it's a pressed pigment and because I've set the crease, it does go on a wee bit patchy at first, but don't worry about that. We're going to build it up and blend it out so it won't be patchy by the time we're finished. I've got deep set eyes so I do keep sort of like dropping my, my brows just to make sure how much of that colour I can see when my eyes are open to work out how far up the lid I need to go. What I'm really pleased about is that Linda has actually, her channel's grown quite a bit. Um, I mean I start, when I first started watching her I'm just going to tap this on just to build the colour up a little bit quicker. Um, when I first started watching her, I think she had seven subscribers. She's got a lot more now, and that's awesome. Um, she has one of the nicest voices on YouTube. If I'm stressed, I'll either put one of her videos on, or one of um, Val that I collabed with on Saturday. I'll put one of her videos on because they both have beautifully calming voices um, and she loves colour which is also excellent. So I'm just, as you can see, I patted this on to build the colour up and now I'm just really gently buffing over that to make sure we don't have any Clumpiness, bumpiness, patchiness or whatever. Working with pigments you can sometimes get some patchiness when you start to blend it out. So you just pop a wee bit more pigment on. And if you find the circular movement buffs it off too much, then just tap very, very lightly all the way across to blend it 
instead. So how's your day been? I hope it's been a good one. Or uh, if you're at the start of your day, easing yourself into your day. Good morning. I hope you have a good day. So I do love doing these collabs. It's great how um, it's it's something that I'd thought about quite a bit. That um, I mean, you see it when you see people do um, like palette bingo, and you think. I, I wouldn't have used the shadows like that. I would have done it, you know, X, Y, Z sort of thing. I'm not saying their way is wrong, because no ways of doing makeup are wrong. If you're happy with how it looks, then that's absolutely fine. Makeup is personal preference, after all, and it can be as blended or as um, architectural or harsh or um, graphic as you wish. And by graphic I don't mean you've drawn a sex scene on your eyelid. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, non-blended edges, really sharp edges to where colours meet. Um, because that can be just as an effective look as a completely blended look is. And I think anybody who um, says otherwise is very, very narrow-minded. You know, you don't always want a warm, blended, smoky eye and a nude lip. You know, that's, that's, that's not what everybody always wants. So... Yeah, but it, it's like, that, that's what kind of triggered me off a little bit. Thinking, oh, you know, I, would, I definitely wouldn't have done that. Or like, when people use a palette and they're, they're doing their first impressions and you know, they, people always tend to, they, they, you have your favourite colours, everybody does. You'll know with me, it's purples, blues and greens. So if there's a purple, a blue or a green in the palette, you can bet your life one of those is going to go on in my first impression. Also, because those are the most difficult colours to create. So, you know, if, if the formulas for those are good, then you can be pretty sure that the formula for the rest of the colours is going to be pretty spot on as well. Um, but yeah, it's just, it just always it fascinated me that people using the same colour scheme can get very, very different looks. And that's what sparked my idea. I was, I was looking at um, a photo that a friend of mine had taken. And if my mum saw a pretty picture, her instinct was, that would make a great jigsaw puzzle. Always her instinct. Um, with me, it's like, oh, I'd, I'd love to do a makeup look inspired by that. So I was going to start a series on my channel where I was just inspired by a painting or a photo or a song or, you know, whatever. And then I thought, well, it'd be nice to do it as a collab. You can see it's because my eyes streaming a bit, it has gone a bit darker here, but unfortunately there's nothing I can do about that, apart from only do YouTube between like November and February, and I think, I think my channel would probably die a very quick death if I did that. Um, yeah, so I thought it'd be really nice to do it as a collab, just to see how, how different, or how similar even, the looks were that we produced so yeah that, that's that's kind of how the thought for this series started um, and I wanted to ask people that I knew loved colour because I knew I was going to be choosing pictures with colouring because it that's what I like you know seeing me do a, um, a neutral look is, is Pretty, pretty unusual, pretty rare, to be fair. To be fair, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair. Right, um, I'm actually going to grab my Certify Affinity palette because I, I think I want to pull a different purple in that, to that as well. I want to pull in 
one of the more bluey purples just along that edge. So I'm going to go into henna and I'm just going to really lightly buff this along the edge. I do struggle with this corners, these top corners here because of uh, eye creases but I'm just going to pull some of this more bluey purple in just on this top corner here. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I, I approached quite a few different people. Thankfully, all of them said yes. So, Nikki, Jessica, Linda, and uh, and then Val that I did last um, last Saturday, and Chelsea, of course, she actually messaged me saying. Um, She'd like to collab with me, and I'm like, awesome. Have you seen my photo series? Because I've got a lot of photos on my phone ready, um, some almost monochrome, with like loads of different shades of the same colour, um, others, you know, very, very different. So And, uh, and Chelsea's like, uh, yeah, I have. It looks like quite fun. I'm like, oh, awesome. Would you like to do one of those? Oh, yes, please. And then um, Jessica enjoyed it so much that she said um, she'd love to do it again. And I'm like, oh, my God, that is just the absolute compliment because, you know, Jessica's a trained makeup artist. She doesn't work in makeup. She works in banking, but she has got the background of being a trained makeup artist. So for someone with skills like that to say they really enjoyed your idea and that they've actually picked up tips from me and I'm like, what, what, really? How come? I just, because I haven't got any background in, in makeup. And, you know, I just, I just chuck colour on my face and see what works, basically. You know, I watched a lot of tutorials when I was starting off to see about, you know, blending and eye shapes and stuff and then just... Which is why a lot of my earlier palettes were very neutral and safe and, dare I say, boring. Hmm, I like that. I keep sitting back and checking the shapes are the same because obviously your eyes generally are not symmetrical unless you're James Charles and you Photoshop it and just. Um, Yes, that was a little bit of shade at James Charles. Yes, I'm being a bitch. No, I don't care. You can see what I mean about it. I struggle to get pigment to stay just at those spots. So I'm just going to tap that on and sort of move the brush around just to, to blend it in without actually doing the buffing. Right now, in my, in my, in my mirror, that looks perfect. In my viewfinder it looks a bit patchy um, but I've said that before and then when I come back and do the editing it looks absolutely fine because obviously my viewfinder isn't as high a resolution as my camera is or my laptop obviously so yay me right yes I like that that's good I'm using a clean washcloth just to change the colours on this brush. I really like this brush actually, I can't even remember where I got I think this was from Shop Miss A, so it was a quid. It's a really nice brush. I did need to wash it before I used it though because it felt very prickly when it arrived. Oh, I look like Captain Spock, don't I? Wait. Sorry, Mr. Spock, not Captain Scott Spock. That was far later on in Star Trek World. Then he became Ambassador Scott. Oh, I'm showing my geeky side now, folks. Um, right, I'm going to go back into the Riviera palette. And I'm going to pick up some of um, Monte Carlo, which is like a corally colour. Just to buff those edges out with. And to pick up on the fact that at the top of the picture, you do get almost like a pinkyish purple. 
um, of the leaves on the trees, the way the light's hitting them. So I'm just going to use this, this corally pinky shade. I've gone much higher. I always tend to do this with these photo clubs. I always go much higher up towards my brow than I normally do. But there is a bit of a gap there, so I can still put my my highlight on. So I'm just blending these edges out. So yeah, so I'm I'm really happy that people are enjoying joining in on this series with me. Um, and I love seeing the different looks because so far all the looks have been, well I haven't seen Val's yet because I'm recording this Friday. So our collab goes up tomorrow. Um, but so far they've all been very, very different looks, even though we're using the same photo. Because the only rules regarding it that I have in place regarding this collab is you can only use colours, because with them... Um, Things like uh, palette bingo, you can add extra colours but you have to use all the ones that you've pulled out. This is slightly different, you have to only use colours in the picture. So you can't add any, but you don't have to use all of them. So, And that really is the only rule. Um, and it's amazing how different the looks have been. I'm just bringing that down. I do like this palette. By far my favourite. I've got um, Modern Renaissance as well, oh. which I know is real, because um, I bought that directly myself. I've also got, I've got Prism, but I think I got diddled. I think my prism could be a fake. Mainly because um, the front cover doesn't look centred. The artwork on the front um, and some of the colours don't, don't seem to blend how I've seen other people's ones blending, which is really frustrating because um, I really like the colour scheme of that palette. So I should keep my eye out and when I've got some spare money and I'm not in my low buy, which I've completely, well, my low buy went to hell the past couple of months with Brexit and everything. Although Brexit has now been extended to the end of October, which is great, except when I watched Nicky Raven's uh, will I buy it last week? Oh, a few days ago. It'll be last week by the time you see this. She was saying that Boozy Shop in Germany have got Pinky Rose Cosmetics and I have been lusting after Pinky Rose Cosmetics for a long time. Especially, I'm just going to dip back into that henna because I'm losing some of the purple while I'm trying to get this to blend out in this top corner here. Um, I've been lusting after bright lights for a long, long time. Um, so I, I caved and bought that. I know this, my whole Brexit broke my low buy series, which I bought about five or six bloody, um, palettes where I splurged and bought some stuff from German sites because I was worried about having to pay import tax from the beginning of April and then it got extended again um, but unfortunately that triggered off my um, my buying habit again and I didn't really realise until I started to get things coming through in the post that I'd been doing my 2am half awake with pain Instead of just looking at things, I just automatically bought them, which, yeah. So my, my low buy kind of got a little bit screwed in March. And then again at the beginning of this month, because um, Brexit was then initially pushed back until, I think, the 12th of April. Um, 
So I'm like, oh shit, pinky, you know, pinky lights are now on at Boozy Shop. I want it. Um, I'm going to get it for the 12th of April. And then it's now been extended to 31st of October, so Halloween. So hopefully when we get to that stage, it will be extended one more time. I can hope. Because I really don't want to leave the EU. I think it's the worst possible thing we could do. Not just because it means that it impacts on, you know, me buying stuff from the EU and having to pay tax on it. I'm really not that shallow. There's a number of reasons why I think it's a really bad idea. I'm going to go with this NYX um, Prismatic Shadow in PS02 called Punk Heart, which looks like this. There you go. And I'm going to get one of my more tapered brushes. Grab one of these. This is my uh, Morphia M321. Don't know how well this is going to work. I may end up going for a darker shadow. I'm just going to try this initially on the outer corner here. Oh, I think I need to go darker than that, you know. Right, so let's do the same over this side so that when I put the other colour on top it will match what I've done so far. Oh, that is very pretty. It needs to go darker. Right. So I'm going to grab one of my Colourpop Super Shock Shadows, very difficult to say. This is Shade Envy. Now with these you really have to make sure you've got them screwed on tight or they will dry out. Look at this. How beautiful is that? A real blackened purple. I'm expecting shimmer everywhere now. But I thought this would be ideal for yeah the sort of really dark purple almost black of the trunks of the trees on the edge of the picture I'm just gonna run that through there like so I might bring that up a little bit actually because I might do a, a halo eye so I'm going to stick some of that on the inner portion of my mobile lid like so and I'm just going to buff all the way along just to soften the edge of that it does look almost black against this doesn't it but you saw yourself it is actually a purple I do love these super shock shadows but they are a bugger to store because obviously you have to keep them in the container with the screw top lid otherwise they dry out and then they're useless I mean one of the mats that I've got has already started to dry out even though it's been kept very very tightly sealed and out of um, UV light as well so I'm going to do the same with this eye. I know a lot of people don't like using shimmers through their crease. 
but um, one of the things that I've actually found is that um, oh by the way don't do this with your eye if you don't have to mine got pulled around a lot when I was a kid at the ophthalmic hospital because of being blind in this eye um, and I've got such deep creasing there if I don't do this I end up with like white patches so yeah a lot of people don't like using shimmers in their crease but depending on the brush you use and the technique you use if you use a fluffier blending brush like what I am using now rather than a packing brush and you use it as you would a matte shadow what you will find is that you will blend a lot of the shimmer out of the shadow which is why you get fall out like this so if, you, if you're the sort of person that does your base first uh, for goodness sake put uh, loose powder down to catch fall out because whenever you use a shimmer in your crease you will get fall out because you're blending it rather than packing it which is how it's designed to be used but you end up sort of blending a lot of the shimmer away leaving the base pigment underneath Although what I like with these Super Shock shadows is you still maintain some of that shimmer, which is great. Hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off. And then I'm going to tidy up down here and show you the foolproof way to cut your crease. This is just a, a pad with micellar water on. Just going to tidy up around the edges here. Like so. I always used to do my face first when I was more into neutral shadows. Now I tend to do my eyes first. There we go. It also saves using tape then as well. I don't like using tape on my skin. I hate the way it feels when you pull it off. Right, now Okay, let's try this again. Now, these are brushes designed to be used with nail acrylic, but you can see they come down really, really thin when you, you know, you do this with them, which is great. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so if I was to just do on the socket of my eye. I would get transfer up here of the shimmers, the same thing if you have hooded lids. So this is the foolproof way of finding out exactly what shape you need to cut your lid. So, I'm going to use some uh, shape tape. And I'm going to pop a healthy amount of it on this brush. And just plop it quite haphazardly where I'm going to cut the halo eye and then look forward and blink a couple of times and you can see it takes the concealer up high enough to show you exactly where you need to cut your crease to I'm just going to grab um, a slightly smaller mirror to hold here just so that I can close the eye a little bit more and make sure this is smooth it's one of the things that I love about these brushes is that they do come ever so thin at the tip so you have an awful lot of control 
over until you get a fibro twitch that does that. You might have to touch that up a little bit later with a, a little detail brush. So, you go across the whole area and then if you flip the brush over to the side that hasn't got any concealer on, I've just wiped it on the back of my hand to make sure there isn't any. And then just lightly press this all over the area that you've got the concealer. It will lift up any excess concealer that would mix with the pigments that you're going to put down. And then I always clean the, the concealer straight off of the brush straight away. I do one eye at a time because I want the concealer to remain sticky. But you can see that when I close my, when I hold my eye normally, that disappears back into the crease. Okay? So I'm gonna come back in with the um, Riviera palette. And the, the colours on the floor start off sort of corally purple, work their way through mustard and end up with that bright blue at the end. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with matte shadows either side and then just put a flash of blue shimmer right down the centre. Hopefully that will work and that will look good. So I've got another one of these brushes. That was the number 12, this is the number 8. I'm guessing that's how wide the brushes are in millimetres but I really don't know. So I'm going to start off with the Monte Carlo again that I use to blend out at the top here. I'm just going to press this very lightly onto the sticky concealer. And again, this is the beauty of these brushes, you can get really close to the edge. Once I've pressed it on and effectively set the concealer, I'm then just going to go over, because obviously it's a matte shadow that I'm putting on, and just build it up a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on this outside edge here. Such a pretty look this is turning into. I'm really glad Linda chose the picture that she did actually, it's really pretty. So then just build up that sort of corally, lilac-y, purpley pink. And then use my clean washcloth again just to change the colour on this brush. And I'm going to go into, I think, Cabana, which is like a, a mustardy yellow. And I'm going to put that slightly overlapping the pink. Just set it blend the two colours together and then do the same thing on the 
outside edge and you can see this actually comes down because of the way I've done it I want it to come down in like a V which is exactly the result that I want so that the blue is a real hidden flash of blue a real sudden pop of colour and what I'm going to do is really gently pull the pink onto the mustard and the mustard onto the pink and just really gently buff those two colours together and then clean the brush off and I'm going to go into Seychelles not seashells as I've heard some people say Seychelles beautiful pop of blue I might actually spray this so I don't get any or very little anyway fallout you can spray it with anything you like um, setting spray, priming spray, moisturising spray like Fix Plus or just clean water but don't put a wet brush into a dry pigment because then you're going to get hard pan wow isn't that a beautiful beautiful colour Sorry, I'm really concentrating rather than talking to you. <laughs> Can you see that? Just how gorgeous that flash of blue is. But then when I rest my, my brows down, you don't really see it until I allow you a glimpse of the fairy. Kind of grotto. I'm just going to grab this brush and go back into can. Just build that back up on that edge there. And then go into the Colourpop Envy. I'll actually use the same brush this time. Uh, well, I had a oopsie fibro fog whoop, spasm. I get those quite a bit, unfortunately, pain. But everything in makeup is fixable. Well, you should get permanent makeup tattooed on, then that's slightly less fixable. Right, um, I'm going to do the same thing on the other eye, but because this is really, it's, it's not a tutorial as such, I'm probably going to speed it up and um, put some music over it for you, which I don't normally do, but I'm aware of how long this film is going to be if I don't.
to uh, pause you while I go and put foundation and everything on and I will be back to finish off this eye look see you instantly I'm back right now I think for the color under the eyes I kind of want to pick up on sort of the pathway so I'm going to go in I'm going to need something quite dark initially um, so I think I might go in with palm which is the deep brown I'm just getting that on a, a flat top brush I'm just going to smudge that right up underneath my lower lash line kind of linking it up with the dark black and purple I just because of the fallout from that I didn't want to use that under my eye this time because obviously I've done my base now don't want you know black and purple sparkly freckles all over my face if I wanted freckles on my face I'd just wear a more sheer foundation and show my own freckles love freckles though do love freckles right and then I have got another flat top brush but much chunkier and I'm going to go into I think coastline which is this one here because I used this to blend out the top of the eye and this one and this one on the lid so I think I'm going to go for this one which is kind of halfway between the two this is um, a proper apricot colour and it's called Coastline. I'm just going to pick that up. As I said, Anastasia shadows, a lot of kick up in the pan, but that doesn't worry me because at least it means you know you're getting pigment on your brush. Just be sure to tap off well. And I'm just going to smudge this all the way along to kind of blend the top and the bottom together and also kind of show off the sort of mustardy corally colour of the leaves kind of as the path gets closer and closer to that stunning flash of blue at the end side down a little bit more yeah I like that I like that a lot now uh, do I want to use one of these shades mm, no not really I think I'm going for a, an actual highlighter um, I think I'm going to grab the Sleek Highlighter in Midas Touch and I'm going to go in with Rhinestone and Cubic Zirconia. Actually no, I might pick up some of this, um, what are they calling it? They're calling the pink one Tanzanite, which is weird because Tanzanite is actually a bluey purpley stone, but never mind. So I'm going to go into that Tanzanite, just run that just under the tail of the brow. I think it will go quite nicely with the, the pinky shade that we've got at the top there. I think that will pick up nicely on that. I kind of want the blue to still be a bit of a surprise, so I think I'll use the white, the cubic zirconia, on 
the inner corner. And what I like to do is I like to bring it along just the bottom bit of the tear duct there and just softly blend it into the colours that we've put underneath the eye. For my eye shape that's the most flattering way of opening the eye up. Uh, if you have a different eye shape, if that doesn't work for you, then just do your inner corner. But for me I find that is the most the most flattering kind of shape. Hmm. Right, I'm now going to go off camera one more time. I'm going to put some more of that white highlight. I might, might do a mixture of the white and the pink actually. Um, on the rest of my face I'm going to put some mascara on, some lippy and I'll be back to show you the final look. You all ready for this? I'm back. Right. Um, I decided I was going to do... Checking there's no lipstick on my teeth this time. Because last time I put this lipstick on. I got lipstick on my teeth and didn't realise till I was editing. That was annoying. This is one of the um, hourglass lipsticks that I treated myself to. This is at night. And although normally you would think to team this with a more nude look lipstick, I wanted something dramatic. I wanted something to com not, not sort of be overwhelmed by the eyes, but then not to compete with them either. So I went for this kind of burgundy red colour because I think it complements the shades of purple that I've used. I like it and to be honest as I said before so long as you like what's on your face that's all that matters. Talking about what's on my face just to give you a quick rundown. Foundation is Estee Lauder Double Wear in 1C0 Shell. Uh, I use the Revolution Fast Base Concealer in C0.5. This is like their version of the uh, Maybelline Age Rewind. Uh, I like it, it's quite a light concealer. Um, and my eyes weren't looking too bad today. I used my um, Honeymoon Palette Gerard for the uh, Hashtag Forever Bronzer and first class blush today love this and although i am a juicy affiliate and i've got a code and i earn commission and i very often get store credit to buy stuff this i actually bought with my own money because i wanted it <clears throat> and then because the estee lauder double wear is a very very matte foundation and that's not something i tend to go for at the moment uh, this is a tip I picked up from Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. This is the Wet n Wild, believe it or not, bronzer in um, Reserve Your Cabana. And I just dusted this really lightly all over my face with a big old floofy brush. Um, and it just kind of, it makes it look more like skin. It takes that flat matte look away, which is what I love. I'd imagine that's how the hourglass... Uh, ambient lighting powders would work. Mascara today is my Barium That's How I Roll Waterproof, which is a really lovely mascara. It really is. And the tube is very weighted, so you feel like you've got something properly expensive on your face. Um, setting spray is Slay All Day in watermelon you'd think I'd remember that by now wouldn't you but I've got two or three on the go so um yeah so there we go there's the picture and here's my look based on said picture with the just a little hint of a flash of blue just at the end of the woodland path. So, I really hope um, you've enjoyed this. What do you think? Would you have done the look like this? Comment down below how you would have done it if you'd have done it differently. And if you've got Insta or you've got a YouTube channel and you want to do 
your version of how you would do it with this, please, please do tag myself and Linda um, in the results because I know I would love to see it and I'm sure she would as well. Uh, talking of Linda, once you finish watching mine, in the description box I have linked her channel and her film. Uh, and obviously I would like you to go over and watch that next, please. That being said, if you have come to me from Linda's channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, the film today. I've got an awful lot of other films that, you know, if you fancy watching, there's, uh, there's playlists over there. Or just have a look at some of the more recent ones. Um, this look will be in a, a couple of the playlists. Um, all my collabs that I've done, regardless of what it is, I've got a whole collab playlist and I've also got a playlist just for these photo inspirations. So if you want to see what other ones we've done in this series uh, and how they've turned out, then that's the playlist you need to look for for that. Right. Do double check you are still subscribed because YouTube is still unsubscribing people and they're not sending you the notifications even when you have the bell checked and you've chosen all notifications so you know every now and again it is always worth double checking that uh, you still got all those items checked right as ever all that remains for me to say is your stay fabulous and i'll see you next time Bye for now.